Okay, number seven. Number seven is our properties. Number seven are the properties. Um, properties are characteristics of categories, right? They're characteristics of categories. I'm going to give you what I think is uh, a very good example, um, comparing and contrasting um, categories from properties so that you have an understanding of how properties relate to categories, but I'm not going to do that until I discuss this last point. So I'll return to number seven in a little bit. Number eight, uh, the last point is what's known as dimensional continua. Dimensional, D-I-M-E-N-R-S. Dimensional continua. Dimensional continua represent uh, are representative locations of a property along a continua. Representative locations, sort of pinpoint instances, of a property along a continua. So we can group these, right? We can group our properties and our dimensional continua. Um, what I would suggest is I'm not going to draw this whole thing out because it's pretty elaborate. Um, print this off and just refer to the concepts here because then you'll make sense of it. So I'm going to give you two examples, right? We have a category, category, category. Then we have properties. And as we've seen, properties, we have categories, we have properties, and we said that properties are characteristics of categories. And then the dementia underneath that, right? So representative locations of a property, right? So properties are characteristics of categories, and dimensions are representations, representative locations um, along a continua of this property, right? So then we have dimensions of well. All right, so we have property, and then we have dimension. So the example that's given in the literature is one of color, right? So we can talk of the category of color, right? So if we have color as our category, then we recognize that one of the properties of color, right? If we're talking about color as a category, then we recognize that one of the properties of color is shade, right? You have color and we have varying degrees of uh, shade, right? So that shade would be uh, shade would be a property of a color, and we see how that makes sense, right? We said that properties are characteristics of the category. Shade is a characteristic of the category color. And then the dimension would be lighter or darker, right? Lighter or darker, right? So our dimension is going to be, and you can see how this works, this would be a spectrum of, sh of, of color going from, let's say, uh, sky blue, light blue, to navy blue. That transition from a very, very light blue to a very, very dark blue is a dimension of shade. And that dimension of shade is um, an aspect, a quality, of a broader category, color. So what we've done is we've seen, in, with respect to color, that we've gone from uh, lighter or darker of a shade, and that is categorized under the color, right? So. Uh, that's, that's pretty generic, right? It's pretty simple. Um, with respect to grounded theory, the example that I gave is, 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 is similar to that, right? You take that same concept and you apply it to uh, the theory itself. If we begin with our category, and the category is, let's say, domestic abuse, then we recognize that a property of that category, the property of domestic abuse, is violence, right? That violence is, and this is just one of many properties within domestic abuse, but if we are talking about domestic abuse as a category, then a property of domestic abuse is violence. Well, how can we look at violence as being sort of um, uh, um, great, uh, how can you look at the gradation of violence across a spectrum? Well, you might say that there is a difference in domestic abuse between physical violence and mental violence, right? The distinction between physical violence and mental violence is a gradation of violence within a larger category of domestic abuse. So we have domestic abuse as our category. A property of domestic abuse would be violence. And then our 
dimension of our property would be sort of this gradation from uh, mental abuse to physical abuse and all other forms of abuse. So in talking about grounded theory, it's important to recognize that the theory one is grounded in the data. The data is used to generate the theory. And then also we have to recognize that um, dimension is an aspect of properties. Properties are an aspect of categories. Um, so that this is more general, this is more specific, right? Um, with respect to color, colors have shade and those shade have a spectrum. And like I said in the example of domestic abuse, domestic abuse as a general category has the property of violence associated with domestic abuse. And that violence has a spectrum, mental or physical. And you can, you know, make your sort of tree um, becoming more and more complex as you go further and further down. Um, and this is what we use in order to substantiate and validate our research within grounded theory. So with that being said, um, that concludes the first half of the discussion in grounded theory. I'm going to continue with the second half of uh, the analysis of grounded theory um, later in the next installment. Uh, and then that will conclude this, this, this part. Um, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to watch uh, my video. With that being said, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Thanks and have a good day.